Okay, continuing on with our few of the little shading bits that were missed um, with the, uh, the uh, corruption of my file. And where we left off was the little faces on the uh, little fairies. We had originally painted the mocha. And then when I, it was of course one of those fantastic things that I painted during that nice 17 minutes of correct painting. So anyway, what I wanted to go back and, and go over was with, with my raw sienna is we shaded the tops of all the little heads and just and then the arms and the little legs the arms the little legs same for the little girl down here as well along here to set the legs this leg behind this leg in the front along the bottom so when I do my highlighting, what I do is I'll take my original base coat color of mocha and what I'll do is I'll add just a tint of the mocha to light buttermilk just to create a light shading. And like if I was doing this a lot and had like a big, big face that I was doing mocha, then I'd probably pull out my natural buff and use that as my highlight color, but there's no point for something this small. So we're just going to make my little highlight. And it's not uncommon, you'll see this listed in my pattern packet. So I'm going to show you how I do that. What I'll do is I'll go into my light buttermilk like so, and I'll start my float. I'll blend, blend it out in my palette. Then I'll pick up just a tiny little bit, just a little bit on the tip. And I'll blend that into the light buttermilk. So I end up with a really light shade of the mocha, just a little bit darker than my light buttermilk would be. Then what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll do my highlight floats, which when I do that is the opposite side. So I do the under the head, like the bottom part of the head, like so. And her, I can actually brighten her up a bit because she was a little bit soft. And then I'll highlight the tips of all the little arms. Yep, pause. And the tips of all the little feet. And all the little feet. Like so. And it's not overly bright, it just adds a little little something to the, the the floats makes a little bit of a contrast okay so that will finish up the floating of the little girls so now we're going to move on to all the second floats of everything and then the um, the flower leaves to start with what I want to do is we're going to do the flower petals and those are going to be really quick and easy and we're going to use the three colors we're going to use moon yellow mustard seed and my favorite sunny day we're going to use those three colors and we're going to use um, a double load technique so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the three colors out on my palette mustard seed I'm not going to do the I'm going to save I'm going to double load and then I'm going to pick up the sunny day as the uh, the tip and we're going to do a few of the petals and then we'll go back and we'll highlight all the little tips and do a little added shading as a after we put all the petals in. And I think what I'm going to use for this as well is probably my number four flat, just based on the size of the, uh, the project here. Yeah, my little number four flat. And these go on really quick. The best thing is, is not to think about them. I'm going to wet my brush a little bit, of course, take out the water, and I'm going to load it with the load it with the moon yellow and I'm going to just corner load the brush into the uh, mustard seed and just tap it out on my palette a little bit just so I can see the color start to blend then what we're going to do is we're going to start putting the little petals in and this is how I'm going to do it we're going to go in like so and finish so I go up like that this and I'm going to see if I can bring my little camera a little bit closer so I know I can zoom aha okay so let's try this way so again I'm going to reload my brush with my moon yellow corner load just a little bit into the mustard seed and I'm going to do a, an S and then I'm going to close it with a little scoop underneath. And I go ahead and do all my flower petals that way. I should you should be able to get about two flower petals out of each out of each um, brush load. Then I'll load again. 
mustard seed. And it's, they don't have to be perfect. It's not about perfection. We just want to get them in there because they still get shaded and they still get highlighted. And of course, you know, I outline everything when we're done. So that changes. You know, if they're not perfect, then of course we will reshape them by liner work. Touch up. And you're not going to see a big contrast in the petals right now. I just like to use the two colors just to add, you know, so they won't be all the same color. You have to talk to them as you're doing them, I find. You can hear me humming or talking to myself. How simple that goes on, just like so. I'm gonna keep this in the camera. I can do these guys. My S. My filament. And of course, this is just the first, the first bit of color on these, so don't don't worry if you still see some of your lines through, anything like that. It'll all come together. So look how fast that was, as opposed to sitting there and base coating them all in. It don't take so long. Okay, so I'm going to put my camera back up where it belongs. I hope. There we go. So this is pretty now. It's all starting to, with just those little bits of yellow coming in there, and it's all starting to come together. So while we're going to let those dry, we're going to go ahead now, and we are going to start shading the box and making that box into something that's old and kind of fun. So with that, we're going to get out traditional burnt umber, and we are going to do our shading. And this too, you know, there's no perfection to this. We're going to create more of a shape with it afterwards once we get into adding lines with the black. So I'm going to go under her, her dress of course. And I've noticed I've left her till the end and the reason for that is because I do want to make sure that I don't have to make any, any repairs to her dress. So there's no point in doing all her shading and then finding out that I have to, to re repaint her. So I'm going to put my shape in, going down the box. This is just the first float. We're going to be doing all sorts of more stuff to this. Let's come over here. Go down. And let's see. Oh. Turn it around. So now we'll go along the bottom. This is all with traditional burnt umber. And we'll come up here. And of course up here. So that's the first little bit. Let's give that a second to dry because it really doesn't stand out just yet. But we'll give it a bit to dry. So with the traditional burnt umber, we're also going to, um, hmm, will we or won't we? And we're going to go back and deepen the shading on each of the little flowers. And this is the part actually that you had missed before, so I think what's really cool is by adding this little bit of shading, you can see how I did it. It's a C stroke. The brush stays facing this way as we go. We're just going to fill in the bottom half. And just It's just going to enhance the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
I just like all these colors contrasting. I find if I use just straight burnt, um, traditional burnt umber over raw sienna, it's very flat. And, and there's just something about it that I just don't really like. And I'm just going to add this like a little bit in here. Because now that those flower petals are coming in, I just want to enhance a little bit of the shadow in here without going, you know, spending too much time on it. This is the one that I really want. So we'll start going along the bottom. I think I'll tuck a little bit just in here around these little petals. Just to darken a little bit. And mop it. To soften. And the reason we're doing that, so waiting for this shading to dry, so we can go back and do the second. I like my float. Yeah, the floats should dry good before you go back over them. That way, you're not going to move them around. And see how that just brought those to life a little bit. That brought them out. Maybe go in here. Okay. So now we can come back to the box. More burnt umber, traditional burnt umber which is my favorite. And if you look closely, I find that I've basically created one, two, three slats. One, two, three slats with the way that my brushes work. If your brush made it look like you've got four slats, do four slats. Or if it make it look like two, then just do it in half. Use the brush strokes as your guide to see how you think it's going to look. So I'm just going to deepen my shading some floats and it's not going to be super dark it's just going to give you that little added look of, of the boards okay let's see I think we'll start from here and I'm not even worried if they're, if they're not straight I'm not even going to worry about that it just kind of adds to the character I think so, and all this is designed to do is to sort of give us the look of, of the boards as opposed to anything else. And I think we'll do a little shading up here. Because we're going to be darkening the other later, so the fact that we're doing a little shading up here is just fine, even though it's the highlighted part. See, so now we're looking like we've got a box, which is really kind of cool. I like that. And then I'm going to go now, and I'm going to start deepening some of the corners with the um, traditional burnt umber as well. So I'm going to come and I'm going to deepen like in here, deepen in here, a little bit here. But then I'll, I'll mop if it if it's not as soft, just give it a mop. Come back up here, I think. Traditional burnt umber is very transparent. That's one of the reasons that I use it, is for its transparency. But sometimes, you know, you have to go over it two or three times to get get it really to show up. It's usually like my I float something else over top of it. We're going to enhance it actually with the uh, fluid acrylic traditional burnt umber, and you're going to see it's going to look really cool. Okay. Go under here just a little bit more. I'm going to paint that black, so I'm not too worried about that. And if you find, like, if say the spot right here, right here, if you think that's just a little bit too white, that's okay. We're going to just add a little bit of a wash over top. If you've got like a little bit more light buttermilk than you wanted in a spot, that's all you need to do. Just darken it up a bit. All right, so with that, and now we're going to go and we're going to work on the little, no, nope, we're going to do that later because we're going to talk about the tag. So we're going to go back to the flowers, and we're going to start shading the little flower petals because they're dry now. And what we're going to do with those is going to be kind of fun because this is where we're going to get out of deco art fluid acrylic. You're going to have a choice. You can use um, 
You can shade with the Burnt Sienna if you prefer. Um, but I'm going to shade with the, the Quinacridone Gold. This is absolutely fabulous. And because we've already done one float on here, it's going to enhance the color, but it's very transparent. So it's, it's hard to explain. So I'm going to start my floating with it. I'm just going to have a look and I'm going to show you the difference between doing the two colors. But you you can choose. That was my burnt sienna. And I'll put them side by side on the palette so that you can see as well. They're actually basically the same color. This is kind of cool as well. So this one here is the fluid acrylic. That's the fluid acrylic. And that's the burnt sienna. Same color, two totally different looks. So if I was to shade, we'll just do a couple of the little petals. I'm going to use the burnt sienna, the regular burnt sienna. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to bring my camera down again. There. Focus on my little flower. And I'm going to show you with the burnt sienna. Just to show you that it's not quite as exciting. So we're going to do these are little C strokes at the end of each petal. Okay. I mean, it looks good. It looks fine. But it's not spectacular. So I'm going to show you now with the fluid acrylic how much vibrant that color is going to get. See that? So much more vibrant. These, the, the difference with these is with the fluid acrylic is when you once you add any sort of water or anything to them, they don't lose their vibrancy. Which is one of the things that I love about them. They are transparent. They float absolutely amazing. They're, they're, I mean, I'm hardly even ever having to add water to my brush. I just go and I pick up a little bit more. I wet my brush to begin with. And then what I'll do is I basically just keep going back into this little puddle that's back into this little puddle. Where are you here? This little puddle that I'm creating here. I just keep going back into it, picking up a bit more of the color because it's so thin. Use hardly any of it and go back and continue my floating. And I just keep going. Whereas if I was doing the... Uh, the burnt sienna, the, the uh, regular acrylic, I'd have to continuously add water and reload my brush. But the vibrancy, so now I'll pick up a little bit of water and just, you know, same as if I was going to float. Pick up just a tiny bit and just keep going. Look how pretty that is. That's just nice and vibrant, whereas this has almost a little muddy look. So I'm just going to pop those up. So even if you did and you weren't sure, or if you wanted to do the project now and you didn't have it, you can just pop a little bit of this, this quinacridone gold over top of the burnt sienna, and it's going to look exactly the same. It's like you're skipping a step. So this is where I'm saying I'm going to give you the, co the color that you could use, but I'm going to show you the choices because I painted the first one without the acrylics, but I am quite excited with what I've been seeing with all these acrylics to use them. Just that little bit more. Bring them in. They don't have to have to be used just for, you know, totally out there in mixed media. They're all about different things to do. Use them. See, I don't even have to go back and I'm not having bothered to reload my brush. These are the same float. Keep going. Look at that. Just nice and vibrant. I just think that's so pretty. I'm going to go back up here so I don't go off camera anymore. Okay, we'll do this one. And of course, I forgot to put the little petals up here, so we'll pop those in quickly in a minute.
Okay. So I'm going to quickly put these little guys in. And if you don't want to use the four flat for this, you can go down to a smaller. I do have a smaller here somewhere. If you don't want to use a four, go down to a two, a two flat. There's little flower petals in there. I really wanted to put eyeballs on this one, but I, I sort of, I did, but with some beads. So while that dries, we can continue our shading with, with the Quinacridone Gold. I don't even know how to pronounce that. So with that same color, we are going to deepen the shading on the little house with our gold and fluoride acrylics. Otherwise, you'll use the Burnt Sienna. It's just going to make that pop a little bit. It's almost impossible to get a bad float with this. It's one of the things you'll find if you start playing with it. It's almost impossible. The beak went a little blurry up here. Go across here. See? Oh, pimple. And here it comes across the bottom, of course. Never go over your wet floats. Quick dry. And with the fluid acrylics too, you only need like a little pin drop like I used, what I showed you on my palette. Even when you're base coating, you only need that tiny little bit. Flower shaded. You'll see strokes of face just like the leaves. Okay. I don't have a Q-tip, but I have this little fabric brush that's got these really stiff little bristles, and I, they're great for cleaning things up. They're just uh, they have a little scrubbers, little fabric scrubbers. You can just get them at the craft store at Michaels or something. And they're great. Just wet them like a Q-tip and use them to clean up. I don't like Q-tips. I can't control a Q-tip. Okay, so those are done. So now we're going to go back to the box again because we just had a chance to dry the first time around. We're going to go and deepen these floats just a little bit more. Just sort of start creating a little bit more depth with it. So the corners are nice when they're dark. It's just like antiquing it, right? It's old, old fruit baskets or whatever. You can sort of get your hands on those old crates, antique stores. That's what I tried to turn it into. I'm just darkening a few spots here and there, especially under here though, definitely under the girl, and in this corner up here. And here. Just sort of using it to build up, you know, some age old stuff. The rest of it will be done with the black. That's looking pretty cool, eh? Let me just go down one, one more across the bottom.
Yeah, I think it's starting to look old. dry brush a little bit too. The dry brush with mangle shader just pick up the, some paint on the whole thing and just scratch it in there. Yeah, ready. So now that we're finished that, we can go back to the little girl and we can just do our little touch-ups on her so we can get her floated and get her finished. So I'm just going to grab my sweet mint. doesn't need a whole lot. It's just more to clean up the edges. Unless she doesn't have a good coat on her. So one thing about Sweet Mint I found is that I loved this color. They came out with it a couple of like last year I think it was or the year, be, the year before. Nothing went with it. It was driving me absolutely nuts. Then they came out with Peacock Teal which I just is great for shading it with but now they've come out with one even better. You'll see it in the new collection. We're not going to use it today, but teal mint. How cool is that? This is how I usually this is how I figure out what whether my paints go together or not. And so look at them that way, and uh, see if they kind of you know how they work in tones. That's actually awesome. We'll use teal mint or peacock teal because I think that's what I've listed. One or the other of them. Yeah, this is peacock teal in the, in the thing. And the reason I listed peacock teal is because that's the color that went with the mint, and that's the color that I had shaded my original dress with. So we're going to shade it then with peacock teal. It's like the name, too. It's pretty. So load up our brush. There's a beautiful um, cobalt teal hue in the, in the fluid acrylics that would look so pretty with this. Didn't want to go too overboard with the acrylics. I just wanted to kind of keep the, the palette with um, what was easily interchangeable in amongst the design based on scrapbook paper. So we shade along the bottom. And we're going to go, this is a little wrinkle here in her dress. And we'll come up here. I mop, I find it just makes them so much softer by mopping. Go through there. It doesn't take much, eh? I'm just going to come around a little hand. a little bit of color up there. Yeah. That's done. So what we'll do now is we're going to highlight it with warm white. There really isn't a good highlight color. Um, sea glass doesn't really work as the highlight. It's a bit on the gray side. So a warm white is the one I'll use, and it just gives her just a nice little, you know, variation in color. So warm white, of course, avoid where you've just floated, like your most recent, so start where you haven't. So we're going to highlight her sleeve, and then we're going to mop it, and that will really soften the white. So it's not really stark. And her tummy. Where the dress has its highlights. With your mop, you just press lightly. 
you don't have to like hit it really hard. I just pounce very soft to blend. And that's, that's how simple that was. But she gets a lot of little, like it's all in the little details that we add in after that'll put her together and make her really kind of cute. Okay. So that's her. So now she's done and she's happy. When we go around her hand with the black, with when I outline everything, that'll clean this up. And then when we do the black too, we can we can touch that up a little bit. So now we're going to take the sunny day, which we put out on our palette before. And we're going to highlight the tips of the flower petals. With just a little bit of sunny day. Nice bright color, very pretty. So those, I'm just going to hit the tip and just kind of walk it down a little bit. I just pick a side because I'm right-handed. Yeah, so we're just finishing up the last flower. Just fed through the video. I skipped it out a piece. I didn't think you needed to sit and watch me highlight every little flower. So I cut a little bit out of the video. Time to. There. So I've just highlighted all the little tops. Okay. So now we're going to go back and we're going to finish the shading on the leaves. And that is actually going to be fun because we're going to go back into another um, fluid acrylic and this is sap green. I've listed black green, that's usually what I would darken the base with. Sap green, like I said, same with the um, the burnt sienna as opposed to the quinacridone gold. It's going to give you exactly a, almost the same color but a more vibrant transparent look. And so I've chose to use this one but you can use black green if you prefer. I really hope that you know you get an opportunity to try these new paints they are just they're just amazing once you start playing with them it's like you can't stop okay so I'm gonna deepen all my shading it's just vibrant see how that just brings that out to life just floats so nicely because they are it's the components of the of the product are different they just seem to float so much smoother This little fella here. Oops, put your hand in there. And that guy. And of course, the same is the watermelon rind. We're going to deepen our shading in there as well, same color or the black green if that's what you prefer. I just still I just can't get over how nice and vibrant these are. They're just so pretty. I was quite excited when Decor came out with them. Um, not so much as that it would change how we do our art, 
Only in that, I just love to see a new product come out to give us different things to play with. Okay, so that's all the green. It's all nice and vibrant. We will go into, oh, the red. We're going to do the top of the watermelon now. Quinacridone red. So this is what we're going to deepen the shading on the dress with. And we're going to deepen the shading on the watermelon. Otherwise, you'll use your cinnamon drop, which is, you know, the color that is listed in your packet. And that's what I would normally, would be my normal shading color. But I'm going to use this one because it's just going to make it all pop. Then again, just like a little uh, pin size, you know, teeny tiny little, like the end of your brush dot size of, of paint is all you need. See how much vibrant? Isn't that pretty? How many times can I say that? But I will. I can't get over it. It's just, it's just beautiful. And it's so much easier to walk down because you're almost, you can actually paint it almost like a wash without getting any harsh lines because of the type of, of product it is. As long as there's water moving it, it seems to work. All right. Now let's see what it does on the dress. It's going to be, hope it's as pretty as I think it will be. We'll find out. Nice thing is, if it doesn't work, we go, no, we're not doing it. All right, let's have a little look-see. Oh, yeah, it's very pretty. Love it. Give it a little mop. Mop, you have to mop it very softly, though. Put that in there. Oh, I like it. I like it. Just enhancing. First, we're going to go in here. Darken that. Tips. All right. So that looks pretty cool. Kind of makes everything pop out. Okay. So that finishes the watermelon flowers, leaves. Now with with the leaves or with anything here with highlights and stuff is I do like to do a brighter highlight and in some cases I will do a little bit with um, light buttermilk. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do just a few little highlights in the leaves, the flower petals, the house, just where I think I need a little added something. And just with the light buttermilk, the warm white's just too bright. This is a little bit more toned down. So we're just going to do her some little floats. And let's see, up here, a little bit on her dress. We're still going to bring turquoise in, so I don't, just, you know, to match the, uh, the little dress here. That's still in its works. The little highlights up top. Right. Just a few leaves here and there. Just 
right at the tip mostly, just just to give it a little, little something. Not all of them. You could also dry brush, you know, just to add a few little tints if you wanted to. Highlights. Okay. Just go get, you know, scooch around. We'll do all the flower petals. Just a few here and there. This this sunflower here is over top of this sunflower, so I did make sure that this petal does end up over over the uh, over top. And just to ensure that, this is a good one to highlight, because it just adds the fact that it should be up over there. And the adding the white highlight to the light buttermilk highlight maybe is on one that maybe the leaf or the, the line shows through or it was a little more on the transparent side than, than you really wanted, that sort of thing. Okay, let's see. Oh, dress, or on the little house. Little highlight. 